what you're looking at here are, is an item that I've saved from the recycle bin. These containers. They come like this. They're gum. There's candies in it. Could be this brand. It could be other brands. So all I did is you take off this plastic part which comes off super easy and then you just need to peel off the top sticker which also comes off very easy and there's no need to use Goo Gone or anything. Now these containers I kept putting them in the recycle bin, taking them out, putting them in, taking them out, thinking I've they're too good to just throw away. So I started collecting them and I've got quite a few. Once they started taking up a little more space, I had to get a little more serious about what to do with them. And I really liked the feel of this and I thought these would make perfect platforms to make some DIY stamps because you can just put it down here. This rounded edge is really easy to grip and you can press quite hard with your stamp. So just a word before we start turning these into stamps. They take up a little bit of room as they are. And if you're short in space, what you might want to do is just save a few of the bases, two or three, and just the lids that we're going to put the stamps on. And then you can just switch off, off the stamps, put it onto the platform, and you have the handle to doing it, which makes it really easy. Now, I am going to keep them as they are. I'm going to actually turn them into a, an organizer. They're going to store some supplies as well. And I'm going to keep all of them in this tray that I can just pull out. I can see all the patterns and just grab the one that I want. So stay tuned to the later part of the video where I show what I'm going to use these for dual purpose. What we're going to use to create the stamps is adhesive foam sheets. Now all of the foam sheets are not created equal. The ones that I've been able to source at the Dollar Tree dollar stores are very thin and they don't have the adhesive. These are thicker, which is going to benefit you, make better stamps, and the adhesive on these, which I got at Michael's, this whole big kit, the whole big set, the adhesive is works really well. So you're not going to have to start mucking with glue. You can make the stamp, peel it off, adhere it, and start stamping right away. So it's worth the extra money. Use a 50% off coupon and go from there. Now as for designs for the stamp, the sky is the limit. It could be anything. I recommend that you go for a scavenger hunt through your house looking for patterns and designs. Look on glasses. Look at the zigzags for ideas. We've got some hexagons here. This what is a sink liner, but I love this shape in here. And I love the petal shape. So I might use that to make my own stamp. On these mermaid tails, I love the shape of that scale. So I might use that as well. I have some scissors, some rulers here, the zigzags, the swoops. So look around you and see. So one of the things that I did is I just opened this up and I'm going to trace the shape 
because whatever design I create has to fit inside this. This isn't absolutely necessary, it's just handy. When I started making it, I often made them too big. So I'm thinking this may prevent that. So once I fill up the sheet, I have it like this. I can copy this and make multiples. I can put one by my chair. I can doodle while I'm watching TV, come up with other designs, or if I note it, a pattern somewhere, I can just put it down so that I keep track of it. So now we just want to do some shapes. And I'm just going to do some things. Now when I transfer this onto the fun foam, I may change it up. I'm keeping in mind that I am going to have to either cut this with scissors or an X-Acto knife. So I'm going to want to be, keep my lines fairly straight. Nothing too intricate or elaborate because that's just going to be impossible to cut out. Now if you have technology and you have a silhouette, you can use that. As well. Now I love the shape, this kind of swoopy star, so I might just do some of those. This is just the idea phase. Now these stamps are great to stamp right onto your art journal pages or mixed media pieces. But they also will work really well on your gel plate. And you can add circles on there. You can add whatever it, you know, you can mix and match shapes. Right now I'm simply experimenting with shapes that I know I'm going to like. So I'm just going to continue on and put some patterns down. Now I've been thinking about this for a while, so I have some ideas. That's why this is seemingly going so quick and easy. But you may add one or two designs over time and when you fill up the sheet then you might decide, okay, now I'm going to make some stamps. So the one on the left, I'm using the same shapes as that one to and rearranging them in a different pattern to create a different stamp. Here, you know, we're not, don't overthink the shapes. These are simple squares and rectangles, and yet they will be perfectly effective on a stamp. These are just ideas right now. These, I may go with this, I may change it later on. These are just ideas. I'm not even trying to make it to scale or anything at this point. You can do this in front of the TV, you can do this, you know, have it out. When you notice a pattern that you like, sketch it down because we forget. And then again, when you get six or 12, you may decide to pull out the fun foam and create with it. Now I know all of these may or may not make a good stamp. I may not like it in the end. It's a bit of trial and error. So all 13 stamps that I make in this video are created from one sheet of fun foam. So this is not expensive. So what I'm doing here is I cut a rectangle out and I'm going to cut these diamond elongated diamond shapes to make 
this and I'm put building the stamp on the template this allows me to rearrange it position it and really see what the stamp is going to look like now I could make one stamp and then peel it off and put it onto the lid but I'm just going to make all of them now as you watch me cut or trace or do what I do there's maybe little tip tidbits here that I may not mention so see how I'm cutting and see how I'm you know cutting off pieces so these two right here these two stamps are basically the same shapes rearranged in a different way you can make a multitude of stamps using the exact same shapes everyone would look different and everyone would act different on your art journal page or on your gel plate. So now I'm going to create a branch with some leaves, just a botanical. Botanicals always look good on a page. So I thought I'm going to give this a try. Now you could just cut freehand out of the fun foam. It's not expensive. If it doesn't work, you're not wasting a lot of money or if you cut a shape and you like this shape the size then you can use it as a template and trace around it as you just saw me doing and then you can just rearrange these again in a multitude of ways i can make a whole series of branches each one looking slightly different now at the end of the video i do use acrylic paint and i show you how these diy stamps look So be sure to stay till the end of the video. But I wanted to show you the steps that I went through and I really, I've made stamps before, but doing it on this template like this, rearranging all the pieces, really streamlined this process. And I highly recommend this step. Now you could free cut or you could trace and make sure that they are close to the same size. But with these stamps, these are mark making tools, stamps. They're not intended to be or replace precise um, stamps. So they don't have to be perfect. So don't stress about making everything so exact. In fact, some of that wonkiness and some of that It actually adds to it so why would we make our own stamps because for that reason alone they are your own your page will be unique no one else will make the exact same sound even if you take the pattern that I have and do something very similar it's going to look slightly different now when you want little circles you can use a punch or you can use a hole punch that you just saw me using for these small circles but you can use punches i only have circle punches or bigger punches so it's not really something i can use with this you can also use die cuts to cut the fun foam here i'm just pressing the circular shape on there to get a rough circular idea I want some bigger circles just giving me a bit of a guideline instead of just tracing it freehand remember that basket it had those two-sided two-sized circles that's where i got the idea for that one i go in afterwards i'm not sure if it's on got caught on film but i used the hole punch and i punched out the center of the bigger circles I love how that stamp turned out. 
spoiler alert, I love how all these stamps worked out. I was expecting some of them to not be so great in reality. And I expected to scrape them off and have to redo them. That wasn't the case. Having the exact size of the surface that we can glue on really helped here as well. So doing that extra step paid off. Now here on the template when I was drawing or doodling designs, I had a rectangle and a square and a rectangle and a square. And then I decided, you know, I'm just going to do rectangles and just arrange them randomly. No special skills needed here. No drawing skills needed. And that's the great thing. This is inexpensive and easily doable for anyone. So I like the waves of this sink liner. So I want to duplicate that. So I'm just going to cut some waves here and then a thin strip to get that wavy look. And then I'm just going to keep cutting along that line and cut secondary and third strips. So freehand it or trace it if you want it to be more precise, up to you. Now here I'm using the X-Acto knife. I've cut out this teardrop shape and I want to cut out the center part. So I'm using the X-Acto knife to cut it out. Now when I cut out the teardrop first, it's a bit of a struggle to cut it out. So on these ones, I'm tracing the shape because I like the size and I want to keep the size the same. And then I'm going to use the X-Acto knife and cut out the center first. And this was a whole lot easier. So if you have any shape where you're cutting out the centers, leave it on the big size of fun foam and then cut it out after you cut out the center portion. I can see doing a larger rectangle and then cutting out the smaller rectangle inside. And you'll find when you go and do this, the more you do, the more creative you do, you get ideas and the creative flow starts. See the puzzle shape? That was a punch that I got from a friend. I end up not putting that one on, but that's an example of using a punch. And then I love, I always love a swirl. So I'm gonna cut out some swirls. So all told, in the making of these stamps, it took, it was under two hours, probably closer to an hour and a half, all told, with some, you know, some stops, stops and starts. And I made 13 stamps. So that's quite a good production level, I think. So again, 13 stamps, one sheet of fun foam. And this adhesive from the Michaels one is perfect. I think you can also buy single sheets, but I'm not sure if they have the adhesive, but I highly recommend the adhesive. You don't want to start mucking around with glue. I have not found a glue that works really well. And then you have the wait time. So now we're just basically going to peel off the backing and adhere it to the lid. And I found in order to make that work easier, position it on the lid, finalizing the exact placement, and then one by one, lift one piece, peel off the backing, put it in place while the others are still there. That just makes it easy to get the positioning 
correct. But remember, again, there's a lot of room for error. It doesn't have to be precise. So this is a stamp that I made previous and I don't like it anymore. Or maybe it's too paint covered or some for some reason it's no longer good. Here's how you can remove it. Just take, I'm taking my palette knife. You can take a putty knife or just a regular knife. Get it off. Peel off as much of it you can. Put some goo gone on it. Let it soak in. I didn't give it enough time to soak in. Let it soak in. Activate the, the, the adhesive and, you know, scrape it and rub it off till you get back to the base. It's really easy to do, no worries. And then you can put a different pattern on it. So the platform, the base that you have, it doesn't go bad, you, you know, even if you decide, if you find you're not using one or you actually don't like it, that's fine, rip it off, you've got some more fun foam, Put a different design. That was my waves. So now that all 13 stamps are made, now it's time to test it. Now off to the side I have my gel plate that I've brayered on acrylic paint. And I prefer using acrylic paint to ink. I don't like the effect. Now there's, it's not a perfect stamp and that's okay. If you get a little bit more paint on it, you get a better stamp, but play with, with it. Remember, this is just mark making. It doesn't have to be precise. There's the one where I punched the hole through the bigger circles, loving that. Now you're getting a little bit of the pattern of the container there. If you don't like that, just get a, a baby wipe and wipe that paint off if you get any excess. That's more me, user error, rushing. But realistically, on an art journal page, I don't know that I would care too much if that happened. If it bothers you, then you take the extra step. So here's where you would wipe that off and before you did the stamping. Now I'm using the gel plate as a basically a pad to get the paint onto the stamps. You could brayer it on with a small two, two and a half inch brayer. The Ranger one works. Or you could put it on with a makeup sponge or one of the Ranger blending foams. There's that rectangular one. And I absolutely, all four of these stamps, I love. I think they make interesting marks. So you're going to have to watch my upcoming videos to see me using these on an art journal page. So let's do another four stamps. This was a star pattern. I don't, I think I did this one off camera. But I love the marks this make. And with the, the acrylic paint on it, some of it's more darker and lighter. I love that effect too. And when you're putting it on an art journal page, you can turn the stamp to get it going in different directions. This one, simple V shape. Look at the beautiful stamp it is. Now I'm wiping it lightly with a baby wipe just to get the excess paint off, but I'm not overly worried about it. If when the, the acrylic paint builds up, I can scrape it off and cut more fun foam and redo the plan. Look at this branch. Oh, I love this stamp. I will definitely be using that.
sorry for the, the delay here, but I think we're going to get moving on right now. So there's those four stamps. Loving what's happening here. Let's do the last five. This one's kind of a check mark. Here's my spiral. And there I'm turning it, and that just gives a different effect. Now I said earlier that you could these foam stamps work really well on the gel plate as well as stamping directly onto your art journal pages. And I will be doing a video where I use these stamps on the gel plate and you can see how I use them so that's coming up too love that fan one and there's the teardrop that I cut out the center I have this as a bigger stamp, but now I have the smaller multi ones, which gives it a different application. So there are 12. I think I have one more stamp. Coming this way. So I hope you give this a try. Like I said, it's inexpensive, it's easy to do, and anyone can do it. These are the hearts that I've arranged. So I'm going to keep all these as samples of what is. So here are all my 13 stamps, and I'm going to keep them in this tray. But these are also good because you can store stuff inside all of these. So if it's taking up space on my desk, I want to maximize that. So I'm going to look around and put different things in here that... I want to be able to use in my art. Now you could put paper clips, beads, but I'm going to put some jute. I want to use some of this jute at, to add texture on my art journal page. So now it's going to be really, really handy. I've got l different kinds of laces and I'm just putting the lace in there. The covers are clear so I can still see what's inside. And instead of being in a cabinet put away, it's handy. This is cheesecloth that you can add for texture to your mixed media pieces. I've got some mesh. Again, add some beautiful texture. And this one's gold, so you got the bling as well. I've got little glued embellishments that I can add to ATCs or cards. But now it's going to be right handy. You could put ribbon in each of them. Take them off the spools, put them in, feed them out the, um, the opening. And again, you have it all easily accessible. I've got the, um, the clips to my happy planners in here. Now another thing that I keep, I always swatch out the colors on the top of my paint tubes and I use my adhesive sticker paper. So I'm going to use my punch and punch out a few of these and then store them in here. So the next time I don't have to go find the sheet, find the stamp, it's already done. I can just paint them whatever color the paint tube is and away I go. I can also use these on my art journal page to add texture 
and then I can paint them whatever color at a later time. So that's going to go in here. I also have magnets that I use and that's going to, I'll cut, put them in there. So any of those small things that I have hidden away, I'm going to bring closer. I've got some Velcro squares that I use. And it all sits in this nice, small basket. Here's some more magnets, magnet squares that I got. I'll just cut it up and fit it in there. And then I'm going to have them close. Takes it out of my cupboards and shelves, which means I could put something else there. And I've maximized the space. Now, just a min minute, I know I'm going to put this in the basket, but I figure at the bottom of the basket, I can put extra templates that I have, the patterns, and I'm even going to store some extra sheets of fun foam in here. So when I want to get creative and make more stamps, everything's there. I don't have to go and start looking in my cupboards and wondering where did I put that? So I still have room for a couple more stamps. I got to guess, I guess I need to start chewing gum. Here is where it sits. This is right in front of my workstation and you can see the stamps are right there. So I can pull them out, which means I'm going to use them more. If you can't see it, you may not use it. So I hope you enjoyed this stamp making video. Even more than that, I hope you go and make your own stamps. Until next time, go get creative.